This divisional round recap edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet 100, get 100 at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WYNNBET. State restrictions apply. What's up, everybody? You're watching SGPN. Fuck the Cowboys. Let's go, baby. everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer dog. Hmm. How about them? Cowboys? How about them? Cowboys the way it ended. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I put on the old, uh, you know, at Kramer centric, of course, most of you probably already follow me. Yeah. Uh, just just per- perfectly curated uh, comment on the Dallas Cowboy game. I'm so delighted right now. I, how, what what were the, what was that play at the end? Oh man, I you know people what are wondering. The- <laughs> we 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 try and set uh, reasonable start times on our YouTube, but eventually <laughs> gets keep putting uh, push back. Honestly, part of the delay was I kept rewatching that final play where Ezekiel Elliott gets blown <laughs> up as a center. I when I saw them trot that out, I go, am I? Is there some NFL rule uh, I'm unaware of? And it was like, oh, Zeke's ineligible. Then why would you have him why is he there? as the center? And then he's so big. If he you're, d- if you're he doubles a, as a uh, long snapper. And I go, if you're the 49ers, you're just gonna destroy him and rush Dak, yeah. right? Yeah. I go, I gotta be missing something. He wouldn't be just trotting out this stupid ass play, and he just mm-hmm. gets trucked immediately. They throw a seven yard completion. As much as we give Kirk Cousins uh shit, that uh that check down pass uh, by uh, Rain Dakota Prescott was just just as cowardly. This was the ultimate Sunday, or this was like the cherry on top of oh. the Sunday for my amazing, amazing NFL divisional round. Not only did I go four and zero straight up, four and zero ATS hit both dogs. One of my dogs, Boston Scott, anytime touchdown. Then the Bengals money line. It is just that is a. Di- it's just been an embarrassment of uh, riches here. The YouTube chat is alive and well. So much going on, and of course, we are live on Discord. Raise your hand, get in. Maybe you, uh, maybe you want to mix it up. Uh, maybe you want to put someone in the locker. You had a bad beat. I don't know how you could be on the wrong side of any of these games if you've been listening to uh, what we've been uh, telling you guys. Yeah, and honestly, it's like a lot the, of fun. Like, like not to get off the Zeke thing too quickly, but I, I, it literally happened this morning in a youth soccer game. Right, it, all of a sudden you get the kid who's definitely not supposed to take the kick. But they're like, I'm taking the fucking kick. That was Zeke snapping the ball. There's well, no way Zeke was supposed to line up. There. Why? And he reported ineligible. So he, why was the, what was the point? I, Maybe was was he going to get the lateral? Well, uh, who knows? Uh, here's the if you play the X Files music, the real. I mean, so his his dead cap number is 11.9 million next year. <laughs> He's not going to be their running back. They're trying to see what else he can do. Yeah, trying to like kind of like the Nate Justify Sudfeld thing. More. They wanted to get a look of Zeke doing a little snapping before the season was and, over. Uh, Poor it- cowboy fans. <laughs> Poor cowboy. Oh, oh man, I thought this was your year. I don't know who talked more shit to me this week, Giants fans or Cowboys fans. And I, I kept telling the Cowboys fans, I go, you guys got to beat San Francisco before you start chirping at me. That's the takeaway from the the divisional round. Yeah, you have two Eagles are the two best. teams who lost on the uh, coming the uh, the up and coming uh, moment. This is the loss before the good shit happens. Jags and Giants. And then you have the teams that were looking ahead to the conference finals <laughs> in the Bills. Oh, there's so many and great the Cowboys. Quotes. There's so many great quotes coming out about that that Bengals win. And of course, we were on the angle that the Bengals felt disrespected. Oh. You saw it when when uh, Joe Mixon did that sweet coin flip stomp celebration. By the way, I nailed the uh, the Joe Mixon angle today. I mean, he was the guy. I mean, uh, 
the touchdowns didn't go all to him, unfortunately, but they, they, they planned on using Joe Mixon early enough. And I think that's going to be the plan next week too. Yeah. Andrew Rob has a great question in the chat. What uh, worst last play for the Cowboys last year or this year? That is, that's a tough call that really, mm. because I, it, <laughs> Well, oh man, you could cut him back to back. Just great, great Mike McCarthy play uh, calling. On one hand, Zeke did snap this year. Yeah, so I think <laughs> and com- get run over comically, uh, comedically. I think this year, maybe I'm a Co- prisoner of the moment. Yeah, but let's uh, let's get the social team working on that. Uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be the San Francisco 49er and uh, big corporate gambling will be Zeke. <laughs> as we oh, just <laughs> wow, that is a great meme. Uh, get on that one. <laughs> Right away. I, th- there's just so much to get to. Uh, let's see. We got the uh, Discord chat is alive and well. We're going to get to them in just a second. Of course, the conference championship Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And you know you're going to be getting down over at WinBet. SportsGivenPodcast.com slash WinBet. SportsGivenPodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T. Bet 100, get 100. State restrictions apply. Spin that parlay wheel. You know we're going to be giving out some sweet win. Build your own bet. Hammering away, finding value, building parlay palaces. Because we're going to be building some awesome picks. And again, live in-game wagering. So many ways to win over at WinBet. And you support WinBet. You support the Sports Gambling Podcast. They're the presenting sponsor of the entire network. So any business you can kick their way. You're doing a favor for us and you're doing a favor for yourself. I mean, they had minus 108 on a lot of these divisional games and sides and totals. So plenty of value to be had over at win bet bet big win bigger offer subject to change service conditions at winbet.com. Let's be 21 or older and present in the state where win bet play is allowed. You or someone who knows a game of problem call 1-800-522-4700. Discord line live and well. Raise your hand uh, real, real if you'd quick. like to get on the line. Sean, just uh, figured we'd start with topical stuff trending currently on Twitter right now. Fire Dorsey and trade Dak. So, <laughs> shout out to the haters. And uh, Night Sports, I see on the line. I I sent you the request to uh, allow you to speak. You got to accept it if you want to talk. He's got his hand up. All right, why don't we bring up this guy? While we wait for the next caller joining us on the line, he is a Dallas uh, Cowboys fan, one of the good ones. Serial, what's happening, Serial? How how you feeling today? I was feeling good till <laughs> till about an hour ago. Oh. I'm pretty good. All right, well, before we get to the horrible, horrible loss, do you have any comment on that final play? That was re- like I don't understand it. First of all, like why is your offensive lineman out there? And the thing you choose is to go right in the middle. <laughs> Of the defense, I don't get it. I don't I, understand I, it. I think if I had to pick which one was worse. Probably this one. This one was like, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, I think what they were doing is they that they had that crossing route, and I think the plan was to run him across the middle, and then Zeke was going to get the uh, hook and ladder, but he stayed in the block. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around what the goal was there. Was it Colts Patriots the the really horrible fake punt that one time, Sean? Yeah, it was. Right. Uh, which was Same. worse? Which was worse? This or that? <laughs> Rub right out of the page there. All right, Serial, while we have you on there, you 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 putting someone in the locker? Who are you looking to blame? Who are you most upset at after this divisional round playoff game? You know what? I'd put Michael Gallup in there if I could ever find him. Oh wow. Okay. That was a nice dig. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where he was the entire game. He's the reason why that first interception happened. He doesn't come back to go get that ball like he should. Your one job to go get it, go get it. And you just decided to sit there and let the cornerback go right past him. Great job. Then, how many, like seven targets, zero receptions? What do you have all game? Yeah, no, they, Gallup was supposed to be like the sneaky DFS play, the sneaky player prop. And Dak he, always likes throwing to him. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dak, you know, obviously likes throwing to the other team as well. I mean, they're, they were fortunate to even have a chance there. One, Elijah Mitchell not running out of bounds. Two, Greenlaw dropping that INT. Uh, it, it's, Schultz not getting his second foot down. <laughs> yeah, it was really a uh, thoughts and prayers, Serial. Does McCarthy keep his job? I mean, top three in the NFC is not something you would fire somebody for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry's cl- near near the end. 
like that Tua uh it's post we saw like that's going to be Jerry soon. So he he doesn't have too many more seasons. Sean I, Payton is available. Now obviously oh, this is where you insert that Jerry Jones car crash, you know, picture <laughs> from the He's, beginning of the Sean year. Payton is on the market. Oh yeah. Look Dar- out. Dark Horse is the Cowboys. Now as much as I wanted the San Francisco 49ers obviously to stop the Cowboys to cover the spread on a decent chunk of change on it. I was kind of okay with the fact if the Cowboys scored a touchdown just to see if they would trot out Maher to see if he could go one and eight on his last nine extra points. Or if they, I think you would just have to have uh, gone for two there because it was um, it was just a complete disaster. All right, cereal. Well, hey, it was a was a fun season and uh, go birds. Oh. Gross. No, I'm a Chiefs fan for the rest yeah. that. All right. You and me both. Good, buddy. good luck to Although you. Although I'll say Bengals, right. you know. <laughs> good luck to your Chiefs. Oh, look at this, Ryan. We got the producer from the Golf Gambling Podcast, no. friend of the program, part of right. the SGPN uh, network here, Mr. Cameron Kerr. What's happening, Cameron? What's up, guys? A little lighter in the pockets, huh, Cam? <laughs> A little bit. Uh, I'll be honest. So I I did just rip up my uh my twenty to one ticket Super Bowl ticket. Didn't feel great, but so, that's why I'm calling in. I need some advice. Okay, nice. Main, mainly from Sean. Okay, well from Ryan too. But so I have my the last two Super Bowl futures I have are the Chiefs at four to one to win eight units and the Eagles twenty two to one to win. 22 units so <laughs> right now so you guys know my wife is a diehard cowboy <laughs> yeah so do i do i just suck it up not not root for the eagles or and save my marriage or root for the eagles will them to a super bowl victory and possibly get divorced no, I mean you just you're you're young still, but eventually you just become numb to everything. You watch the game with a s- stone cold <laughs> scowl, and no one knows what you have action on. Yeah, I mean, I would just lean into like, "Hey, honey, we're we're Chiefs fans now. Go Chiefs!" I, I made this great investment for the family. <laughs> and don't don't all all you have to do is just casually mention when the Eagles yeah. win the Super Bowl in Arizona, and the confetti's coming down. You go, "Well, hey, at least I won twenty two hundred dollars." You guys like, wait, what? And just, you know, I think you slow play the Eagles ticket. Uh, Lean into your Chiefs ticket big time. There you go. Women, although, listen. although, although Patty Mahomes and that high ankle spread. They I understand women. They may not understand sports gambling, but they love money. <laughs> so you just gotta yeah, do the translation, well, I, I bro. Could, I could use the money and take her on a vacation. There you yeah. go. Like buy some jewelry or something. Yeah. Uh-huh. You gotta dangle a little wife uh tax oh, yeah. on any futures winnings just because it'll make your life much better. Trust me on that one. Yeah, w- yeah. I shouldn't have posted my tickets from Vegas last week because <laughs> she's like, um, are you bring me back something? You, you gotta do you gotta do the good fellas. You just gotta slide her some cat like, hey honey, like, go ahead and go shopping for something. Yeah, or just every <laughs> once in a while I'll give her some cash and be like, Hey, get yourself a nice dress. <laughs> yeah, and there then, you go. Yeah. And then you but. never really I, never really bring in what you lost, what you won. My <laughs> wife, if you asked her, has Sean ever lost a bet? She'd be like, maybe because I only, I only tell her about oh, yeah. wins. I think she understands that I lose or, you know, sometimes when we're watching games and I'm like, mother fucking shit. Fuck. I think she so, can do the math, but I'll never admit to losing money to my wife. So uh, <laughs> in her mind, it's just, I've only won. That's dangerous dude. You need, you need some, you need a way to lose, if, like siphon some of that out just so you're not always winning. Yeah, I, the wife has gotten down. I got her down to the terminology of desirable outcome. <laughs> Plus EV opportunity. She goes, she goes uh, Cowboys losing was a desirable outcome, I assume. <laughs> All right, Cam. Hey, uh, best of luck with your Eagles future. Yeah, it was good seeing you guys this week. I'm rooting. I'll be rooting for the Eagles, man. Um, They're Steelers fan. They, What's I wrong? Think they with have you? a shot to beat the Niners. I think that any if they if this game was you know anywhere other than San Francisco, they would have had a better shot. So. I like him to win and uh, let it ride. Let it ride. Check out the Golf Gambling Podcast. And it looks like we are joined by one of the co hosts oh, of no. the Golf Gambling Podcast. It's a baby fucking oh, wheel, I gotta, man. I got to turn it up so I can you understand. Put the, him. put the Boston filter on. Joining us uh, on the line, the one and only Boston <laughs> Capper. What's up, Capper? What's up, boys? Congrats, Sean. Thank uh, sorry you. for your loss, Ryan. Oh, yeah. The uh, 
<laughs> I made a lot of yeah, money I'm, this weekend. I'm all right. Right, right no, you, is where you seem fine. You wearing the sunglasses at night, man. Well, yeah, I'm really. Okay. Fi- I, look, he doesn't want to see his red eyes from all the crying well, he's been doing. Let's let's talk about it. Two straight days of uh, 8 a.m. kickoffs. Well, I've I've been running some long days with all this playoff football. So yeah, I mean that, and I just want to make sure everyone knows I'm 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 in good spirits, sending off the yeah. good vibes with the shades. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, Thank I understand you. the U Sports thing. I don't do the soccer, but I had to do a whole gymnastics thing today. Ooh. Oh wow! So I'm, I can Sounds watch horrible. it on YouTube. TV on my fucking phone <laughs> and it's dying halfway through. I have to oh. choose on my battery. I'm trying to sweat a golf tournament and I'm trying to watch fucking football. I'm running to the cat of smoke butt and put my phone on the charger so I can hopefully have enough battery life to last to the end of the game <laughs> until this gymnastics competition is over. But uh, anyway. Uh, the best um, part is the best part about these youth sports events is you very quickly realize who, like who's in the know. Like which parents yeah. are are in on, <laughs> on the gimmick. Because all of a sudden all of a sudden, it's like, hey, buddy, you know, I, you know, we've never talked before, but I noticed you were watching the game, so I'm going to come hang out by you. Yeah, dude, exactly, dude. What my daughter did, uh, competitive dance forever. Like there was a group of like five or six of us. So that's how, like, one of my one of my best buddies, uh, Jesse. Now, like, he runs the poker room, and like, he was looking at some. We were both betting on lines. He's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm betting on the game." He's like, oh, "Me too." I was like, "Well, you are the only normal person here, so now we are friends." Um, yeah, it's really a normal filter. Anyway, how you feeling with this uh, this outcome? I'm good with it, man. Like, uh, listen, I thought uh, I thought San Fran was going to smash Dallas. And what's funny is, is, like, I never gave a fuck about Dallas other than their fans were annoying until, what, I don't know, 10, 15 years of this fucking podcast <laughs> at this point. <laughs> now I hate Dallas, right? I hate Dallas. Like, it's just weird. It was like, by osmosis, I don't like Dallas. So it made me very fucking happy. Um, yeah. I, lost a, I lost a sweat to John Rahm today in golf, which sucked, but... Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I think uh, I think the Eagles minus two uh, is disrespectful. Uh, Purdy uh, looked like uh, the moment was a little too big for him, and and Dallas has a good pass rush, but Philly's got a better pass rush. And do you guys think Vegas is terrified by laying this minus one line with KC? Like, what are they doing? Like, I, they like, do because, they know something we don't know yeah. already? Like, is Patty Mahomes not playing? Like minus one? Like, I feel like I want to smash the Bengals. Look, if they made a movie about Spider-Man without the powers, where he was just <laughs> human, it wouldn't be that interesting. I think I think Patrick Mahomes looked pretty fucking horrible in the second half. That's the reality well, of this well, line. He, and he's on one fucking leg. Of course he didn't yeah. look good. Yeah. He shouldn't play. Huh. Sean, yeah, I'm gonna be I, the I, doctor I, guy. <laughs> you know, he's really gotta look out for his long term term health here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, and Chad Henney, as we saw, I mean, just as if not better than Patrick Mahomes. And, and so maybe way, it's maybe it's a, maybe the Chiefs caught a nice break there. These fucking defensive players tackling people on their body and falling on their ankles. How dare they? <laughs> How dare you make contact in football? I someone my, wife, my some, wife hates how I root for sports because if I have money on the other team, I'm like twist that motherfucker's ankle, get him <laughs> off the field. And she is well, horrified. I, horrified by the My wife will be like, don't root for injuries. That's bad karma. It is. So I just yeah. do the reverse. Oh, uh, hey, I hope no one gets hurt out there. Wow, <laughs> hope he gets back in the game. It would be a shame not to see uh, you know, Joe uh, Nick Bosa again in the conference championship game. Hope he's okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. We'll see. I think I think Philly's gonna smash. I wish it was the fucking night game. You guys got the four o'clock game. They definitely should have done NFC fucking at night. The link all lick it up. All you fucking maniac Philly fans fucking out there, like oh, like that. They they. Missed an opportunity. They're probably trying to cut down on like felony arrests in in Philly uh, by putting it at the four o'clock game. But smash that. And then uh, listen, in uh, in three weeks. Uh, we got the waste management Phoenix open. We'll have oh, lots yeah. of uh, good prop bets, uh, cross sports between golf and Super Bowl. It's one of the best tournaments that you guys could watch. Uh, throw it on before the Super Bowl. Everybody's drinking. Everybody puts some money down on some golfers and things like that. It's not your typical stuffy golf tournament. Everybody's loud, throwing fucking beers. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. a great opportunity to make a lot of money in about a uh, Super Bowl weekend, man. And waste I management have, open in the Super Bowl. And I have it on good authority that Cousin Mush will be in and around the grounds and potentially competing in a field goal competition. So uh, oh if you've ever God, met is Mush really doing a he didn't tell me he was doing a field goal competition. If you've ever if you've ever uh maybe I misinterpreted the message, but if, if you've ever uh met cousin Mush and you want to see him kick field goals, you should head down to Arizona. And then later in the week you might want to check us out doing a live show. Yeah, so. we're gonna be doing live shows uh from the Ainsworth in uh Phoenix. More details to come. And but yeah, we're gonna be out there the out. we're gonna be out there the whole week. So uh getting a bunch of big name interviews lined up and uh, obviously a shit ton of picks props 
for the big game, aka the Super Bowl. Hey, Capper, thanks for calling in. Make sure you check out the Golf Gambling Podcast. Him and Steve Shermer are the best. Let's go, Capper. All right, boys. Let it ride. Hey, uh, you know, Capper was mentioning the, the tailgating thing. Perfect time to transition oh. to uh, this week's edition of Real Men of DGENS. SGPN presents Real Men of DGENS. Real Men of DGENS. We salute you, Eagles fans. That's right. Eagles fans found a hack. Uh, to the tailgate Saturday night. Now the lots for the games did not open until 4 p.m. because the game started at eight. But across the street, the indoor lacrosse team had a one o'clock game where they opened their gates at 8 a.m. So a shit ton of Eagles fans bought tickets to the NLL Wings uh, lacrosse game. Started tailgating at 8 a.m. when the game started and ran it up all the way to 8 p.m. for an electric kickoff uh, and the domination of the New York Giants. I still think it's funny that the parking lot opened earlier, like r- more <laughs> hours before this game than it did. Well, uh, you know, they know if you're uh, the only reason you're attending a lacrosse game is if you're going to be drinking five do, hours. Do you ahead know of time. the outcome of the Toronto rock versus the Philadelphia wings? Do not look it up Uh 14 to three. 14 to 5, Philadelphia oh, okay. loss. Well, Ryan, you know, it could it wasn't gonna be Can't a perfect win week. Can't weekend. win them all. Cowboys lost, my locks hit, the Eagles are going to the Whoa. NFC championship game. Whoa. What more can you ask? All right, let's all act- the real fans were were boxed out by the Eagles fans <laughs> who bought tickets. All right, let's get to the full recap starting with Saturday's games. First up, Chiefs 27, Jags 20. Got that sweet, juicy backdoor, a plus eight and a half, Doug P. I mean, to me, this is just this Andy Reid, Doug P. Invest <laughs> full investigation. No, come on, full it, investigation. People who are saying it's rigged haven't been gambling long. Well, yeah, obviously. this happens all the time when you're down two scores, and I don't even. Even if I had like Jags money line, I wouldn't have hated that play. Like you're you're fourth and three, you're within field goal range, kick the I field goal and go go for the. T- just a disgusting backdoor. Patrick Mahomes doesn't get hurt uh, with that wow, just horribly can... dirty tackle to the body of Patrick Mahomes. The Warren Sharp, during the act Warren of football. Sharp was saying that was a dirty play. It's like, what are you, he's he's tackling Patrick Mahomes and fell on him. Like what? the reason, but, but specifically the I reason. I mean, have you, if you if you played football, you don't consider that a dirty hit. All right. So way. yeah, I was gonna, what I was going to say is that basically when you tackle someone and you uh, drop your weight. It's because you're not hitting them straight on and you want to stop them from moving forward. So you want to drop an anchor. Think yeah. of a boat. What does a boat do? It drops the anchor. Again, I didn't play football. Sorry. Never tackled with pads on, but I did play rugby and you do the same fucking thing. And you know what you should do? You know what these guys should be trained to do is not fight through this stuff. Learn how to fall as Dex- sexy Dexy said, the Pilates makes you rubbery. They got to do some of this stuff, Sean. Uh, this is on the the ball carriers at this point. Not dirty. And Warren Sharp, I, I, I am. He now is officially in the people I hate that cover football <laughs> oh, Twitter wow. list. Wow. I still got to keep tabs on them, you know. So when they <laughs> do things I hate, I've seen it. But I mean, it's it really is a bad take. I didn't realize he was a he used to be a spreadsheet nerd. Now he's a fucking hot. Take now he's a hot take machine with yeah. the mustache. I mean. But again, for me, the Chiefs' passing defense, I think, is still really suspect, and we'll, we'll see what my model spits out. But Joe Burrow, fully healthy, with a chip on his shoulder against this Chiefs' passing defense, how do they slow down that that Bengals team? I, I, again, I'm going to just continue to quote Chris Collinsworth, but Patrick Mahomes, being just human, makes this team not very good. And Travis Kelsey's great, but the way that Cincinnati played defense, like we told you they were going to play defense defense well, against and, Buffalo, and, they, and they're and, going to do the same thing against Kansas City. And they have Kelsey, but who else do they have? They don't have an explosive. They don't have Tyreek Hill. They don't have a guy that can it's, make it, your quarterback it's way Kadarius better. Kadarius Tony. Yeah, I th- there's a bit of a drop off from Tyreek Hill down to Kadarius Tony. Uh, uh, look, so I do. Uh, while I do think if Mahomes doesn't get hurt, they probably take care of Jacksonville pretty easily. I do think now that he's hurt, it you know, 
Cincy looks like a team that look, they know what the fuck they're up to. They look a uh, They in. looked like the like the the football uh, representation of Mike Tomlin. I'm fucking working here, and they're hitting. Like there 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 were some hitting going on Whew. in the Cowboys Niners game. Uh, yeah, and uh, the Bills Bengals. But the, the the Bengals were hitting. The Bengals looked like the cold weather team that was at home. The Bengals looked like the team with a plan for all the, the, the Josh Allen truthers out there who I, I, I don't get it. It's not Josh Allen's fault. You want to fire Ken Dorsey, but Brian Dable didn't mean anything. I'm confused because Dan Jones <laughs> and Josh Allen just made it to the same point in the NFL playoffs. I think there might be something to that. And specifically, if you watch that game and you don't think that Josh Allen has some, some regret, he was, he was locking into first reads. We saw it repeatedly with McKenzie plays. He just, Josh Allen, they, the bills never had a chance to win that game. Ryan feels like you're skipping ahead to the bills. Bengals. Uh, we got to speak about the Eagles 38 to seven, uh, just undressing of the New York giants. It actually happened on the five-year anniversary of the NFC championship where the Eagles beat the Minnesota Vikings 38 to seven. I'm I'm pissed. I wasn't aware no, of it. You're one of these a, guys now. You're one of these back in the day guys trying to trying to correlate stuff to historical events. No, but I definitely would have bet it exact score oh, if, wow. I had, if I had come across it. I mean, 35-17. Uh, apologies yeah, to the, to the Eagles' guess. defense. I doubted you, thinking you would let up 17 points against this. It was really cute. I mean, I, I it's good content for the show. The chirping that I got from Giants fans, so confident. It, it's just good to have relevant football for the New York Giants. Uh, the Eagles are now twenty four and six last thirty against the Giants. Uh, we own the Giants, and mm. this divisional of uh, victory, thirty eight to seven, the largest victory in a playoff game between divisional opponents since nineteen seventy. Last but not least, I have to mention Jason Kelsey. There was a lot of talk from prognosticators that he was too small. He was going to get pushed around and he was a road grader. The entire Eagle Eagles offense. The the narrative was, "Hey, we weren't healthy last time. We almost beat you with our backups. So why didn't why did I see Davis Webb out there if he was if he was able to hang with the Eagles starters?" The Eagles were just the superior team and it was uh it was a great victory. Oh, okay. We're not talking about the draft yet. I have no further comments. <laughs> Ryan, uh, I think the the Giants. Oh, you weren't prepared for laying that. down a little bit in the second half. If I was a Dayball guy, I'd be slightly worried about that. Nah, it, the, it, it felt the, like they you can, conceded you can, you can, a little you early. You can micro take the yeah. hell out of this if you want, but the bottom line, this is a lot like the Eagles lost to the Bucks last year. Team in the first year, a lot of dead money, a lot of reason to be optimistic, and yeah, I mean uh, it's well. Interested to see what will happen with the draft picks. Interested to see what will happen with some cap space. Uh, Kenny Kenny Galladay will not be on an NFL team next year, I don't think. Why? He's a great downfield blocker. He's a great blocker. Uh, <laughs> it may be tight end position somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what? The, the, obviously, expectations were were met. They went over their win total. Kaching. Oh, wow. They made the playoffs. Kaching. They won a game in the playoffs. Sean. I'm Part happy. Participation trophy. Uh, no, coming. not not at all. Not at all. Would have loved to keep it going, but obviously. Uh, the Eagles have there. There are a couple teams in this league that have uh, a wealth of talent. Eagles being one of them. So hopefully they trip and shoot themselves in the dick next week because we still have not seen Jalen Hurts. The Giants didn't force Jalen Hurts to beat him with their arm. Period. Well, I I think he started out beating him with but their no, arm. There, one one pass play isn't beating them, and that so a, a team has to force that. Maybe the Niners will do it. Maybe they won't. I I think he. I think what happened was they got out to a lead, some of which was due to the passing game, and then they just squeezed the life out of the game with an offense, uh, an awesome offensive line. Yeah, but uh, there were zero high, like high leverage throws that Jalen Hurts had to make. That's my point. Uh, yeah, because they were playing from ahead. Exactly, and and I think that's been most of the season for this team. So once again, we haven't really seen what it looks like when he has to bring them back. And and I know I've talked uh, shit on Howie Roseman a number of times, but and Jalen Hurts and Jalen might Hurts. as well get those those receipts. I've apologized out. to Jalen Hurts Have a you? number of times. I said on the show when he was drafted, I said, if he wins a playoff game, I'll, I'll buy his Jersey. I bought his Jersey after watching that initial season and realizing what a fucking dog, dog that guy was. So I apologize to Jalen hurts and Howie Roseman for doubting them and building the most, uh, the most insane quarterback factory of all time. You really have to give it up for Howie Roseman. Uh, he had a home NFC championship game 
And then five years later, another home NFC championship game with a different quarterback and a different head coach and only like three or four guys on the roster. So the way they could, they turned over the roster from the Carson Wentz era, got Jalen hurts weapons around him recovered from drafting Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson is really I mean, if he doesn't win executive of the year, it, the, the, the award means nothing. I think it means nothing regardless, <laughs> but really an amazing job. Hats off to Howie Roseman hey. hats off to Nick Sirianni, hats getting the off. guys ready to play hats off to Howie Roseman. I saw he was comparing Jalen hurts to Michael Jordan. That was Nick Sirianni. Oh, and sorry. he, if you read Sirianni's the, arrogant as fuck, if you read, Ooh, the, what's gonna, if you read the, um, <laughs> The failure is going to be beautiful. No, if you if you read the quotes, it it makes sense what he was talking about. How he's a leader oh, off I the wasn't field, on, on the field. No, but if you actually read it, it's like, all right, I see. He plays very well. He's an intense competitor. He's the greatest in his sport. <laughs> that was not has the a gambling problem and might get someone <laughs> close to him killed. He seems very very uh, opposite of Michael Jordan in a lot of ways. Uh, D bet is saying that was Lurie's call to draft hurts, not Howie. Well, Ooh. from what I heard inside the building that Howie, uh, that, that you're, you may be right because I did hear that Lurie was sold on hurts after year one. Howie was the one that still wanted to keep their options open. Luckily they didn't trade for Russell Wilson. Didn't trade for Deshaun Watson uh, would have been an insane, insane disaster. The discord line is alive and well, everyone looking to hop online, get in the discord sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. This gentleman will be at the waste management open kicking field goals. Apparently <laughs> cousin mush. What's up cousin mush. Gentlemen, uh, I feel like I need to explain uh, this, uh, yeah, imp, uh, explain, uh, yes, this explain catastrophe yourself. that is about to happen. <laughs> yes, please. So uh, I have friends out in the uh, the the Valley of the Sun. Uh, the purpose of the trip is to just escape this miserable weather that we're having here. <laughs> it turned. It turns out <laughs> that not actually at the waste management open. However, I will be on the 16th hole on Tuesday for the practice round. Uh, all you can eat, all you can drink. Anybody you want, want to come hit me up. We have extra tickets. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I'll see what we can do. Oh, awesome. Um, uh, but the field goal contest is ironically another chowderhead from the Northeast. Johnny Cranston, oh. uh, ran his mouth after Maher missed the third extra point last week. And somebody said, you think you can do better? Let's just say there's thousands of dollars on for this guy, not me, this other guy, Johnny Cranston to make one extra point out of four. He gets four attempts using one of the T's oh. like a college T if he misses, then he can put up another thousand dollars to try it until he does it. This guy's got a lot of money, so th there could be a lot of money to be made. <laughs> then I'll I will be partaking you. in the uh, who can kick the longest field goal contest. <laughs> I feel if I can make a thirty-yard field goal, I got a shot to win some money. Thirty yards is not that far. How are you, you going to go it? old school Dempsey style with your toe Straight and get on. it thirty yards? Slow, load, load a roll of quarters in your shoe. <laughs> All right, Mush. Anything, well, uh, anything. Thanks for calling in. Looking forward to seeing you. I'm sure we'll be uh, hanging out out in Phoenix. Yeah, I'll try to hit you guys up in Arizona. All right. Best of luck with the picks there. Let it ride. Uh, did you see Ryan, Ryan that uh, that Gronk, our, our good buddy Gronk? He Close is going personal to friend. the uh, the kick of destiny. They're calling it, and they're doing some sort of promotion around it, where if he hits it, you get a bunch of free bets. We, Ten we million dollars in free bets being shared. We like, should we should do that for you. Maybe we can talk to our buddies over at WinBet for a Ryan Kramer kick yeah. of destiny. Yeah, I mean, I I'm happy to do it. Happy to do it. You, we, we, well, I don't know if we want that pressure on you. You we know, I, you, you know, I have the, uh... <laughs> Oh, I'm feeling great right now. Feeling great. Uh, Thanks for asking. All right, let's get to the uh, rest of the games and then we'll we'll get our early takes on the opening numbers they are out they are available over at winbet sports gambling podcast.com slash winbet well, bank real quick cuz yes. I, well, I meant to ask you this earlier what are the odds for the Jacksonville Jaguars to win the division next year uh, I mean we'll see it, I think it could depend a whole lot on 
is Tennessee completely locked into Ryan Tannehill? It doesn't doesn't feel like they're completely sold on him. If they can, they might be a dark horse for a this veteran team might quarterback. Be good. They got Calvin Ridley. No, I I. <laughs> I, again, I talked a bunch of shit on um, Trevor Goldie Lawrence, Locks. Goldie Locks, uh, rightly so at some point. I mean, they were what, uh, you know, what two and eight or something yeah. halfway through the season. Kudos to Doug P for rallying the troops and going on a nice run there. Uh, but I did, you know, in that Chiefs game in particular, I thought I saw some high level throws, and uh, maybe he has turned the corner there. So they're interesting. I mean, obviously, I think they would be the favorite. But yeah, maybe like minus two hundred. I Tennessee is still a well coached team, and I think they could be in the in the mix for a, be, a veteran they'll, quarterback. They'll be close to each other, I think. I think Jacksonville will be slightly ahead, maybe like minus one. I I definitely think Jags will be the favorite. I think it'll be in the minus. Yes, minus two hundred would be my guess right now. Also, some high level hair coming out of Trevor Lawrence's helmet. Just amazing, Goldilocks. A uh, Bengals twenty seven, Bills ten. We were both on the Bengals to win. And them on the money line. This didn't feel like much of a game. Again, the Bills' defense is very susceptible to the passing game. Uh, Joe Burrow was able to move the ball up and down the field, and you know, they got that one Jamar Chase touchdown called back. Bengals wanted it more. The Bengals were just firing off the line. It just felt like they're again. We kept saying this Hamlin thing. I think is emotionally draining. It, it, it felt like they had trouble getting up for this game. I'm, I'm sure. I'm. I mean, not to to be dark, but I'm sure it was a, li- a slightly distracting to have him come join the locker room right before the game. I. I mean, well, I, I there's don't only know. there's only so much you can do. Like, get up for the biggest game of your life. Get up for the biggest game of your life, and then you got another game, and then you're looking ahead to this neutral field thing. Me- like, meanwhile, it, this this other team is just like these motherfuckers. Yeah, like mm. they had a chip on their shoulder. They had nothing to lose. You mean you read the comments uh, immediately after? Yeah, you know, they were letting people buy tickets for the mm. AFC Championship game at the neutral field. And Joe Burrow immediately brought it up, saying, "Better send those refunds." Uh, Jamar Chase quote: "We were proving people wrong. The NFL was doing stuff to get the Bills to go to the Super Bowl. They're trying to make it seem like we're not ready. We're here to prove it." I, I they did call more penalties on the Bills. Yeah, so for I, what it's worth, they didn't even really need the refs' help. If anything, uh, or maybe maybe a little do bit, you, but I didn't you, I didn't feel like it was one sided at all. How much of this do you put on Josh Allen? I think a decent amount. Um, but again, like I certainly not having Dable. Dable was Dable is a talent Whoa, maximizer. Relax. He was the same this year, though. <laughs> Josh Allen was the same this year. I mean, I think it, I think it, what it came down to was like at the end of the year, like maybe at the beginning of the year things were fine, but by the end of the year he was he was not making good decisions consistently. He, he was, was consistent. It. He was consistently making bad decisions, and everyone was like, ah, the receiving core like isn't isn't there. It's the same receiving core as last year too. And so they added a running back. They had like, I, I, I just, there's a version of this where like what Dable brings to a quarterback is the idea of structure yeah. and without that structure. I mean, people want to fire Ken, Ken Dorsey's both interviewing for jobs and they want to fire him. So <laughs> uh, go figure. Yeah. And, and Josh Allen has a, a lot of talent, but uh, so he hasn't gotten to an AFC chance or yeah, wait. He hasn't gotten to an AFC championship no, and I, game, and right? I, I pulled it up early. No, he he has gotten to an AFC. No, he has not gotten to. Yes, he has. Kansas City. He's back, gotten back to back conference championship. No, no, it was. Oh, uh, that was, it was the Bengals. Yes. It was Bengals Chiefs. Maybe the year before. No, the year I'm before like, he got there. Okay. Oh, you know what? What I'm getting confused by is Week 20 in 2021 playoffs, or in 2021, 2020 season, 2021 playoffs was the conference finals. Uh, the next year it was not because we got an extra game. So yeah. And Joe Burrow now he has as many playoff wins five as the Bengals did in their entire history before wow. drafting him. Again, it, you know, as much as it's uh, hey, obviously a quarterback league like that just that's no accident, right? No, I mean not. The it's the same thing with he somehow backs up JT Barrett at Ohio state and then gets freed, goes down to LSU wins a national championship. Everyone points to all the talent that it was on the team, but they still won the national championship. They still had a, this dominant offense. So we, we come, we cut to Cincinnati. He gets hurt coming out. You know, they're going to, they don't draft Penny Sewell. What are they doing? They don't want to protect, protect this guy. They go out and draft his dude. And I mean, 
They're just unstoppable. <laughs> they don't care if and they have the best backup running back in the league too. So Maje yeah, Piran is a Piran, fucking monster. Piran bit of a dog in him oh. as well. Uh, and normally I'm the guy who says like, Hey, if you're missing your offensive line, it really matters. It really huh. has a huge impact on the game. But one, I thought the O line, like if you actually looked at their backup offensive line, well. it wasn't, it wasn't that much of a, um, a, a drop off from what they were trotting out there. And again, there's anyone that feels comfortable with no offensive mm. line. We've seen it. Joe, Burr, it's, it's getting just, cold. He, he doesn't look the part because he, you know, he's uh, he looks like Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> but he he's as he's good at street ball. He's good at like the freestyle shit. And that's all this is. And the fact that him and Chase have played together for a number of years, I'm sure helps. Like to ha- like how is Jamar Chase so fucking open today? How yeah. does that happen? And and, and then freestyle. Bills Bills got injuries in the secondary. It was just it was just a classic disaster and for a team from Buffalo, they really don't have that they don't feel like a cold weather team more, at all. More likely to miss the playoffs next year. Dallas Cowboys or Buffalo Bills? Uh, Dallas Cowboys. More likely to miss the playoffs next year. Buffalo Bills or. Hmm. Well, I, Buffalo Bills still I, are in a pretty, a, a pretty good spot in their division. Are they? Yeah. I mean, who, who else is the quarterback that's going to win the AFCs? If Josh Allen is regressing. And he's taking step another step back I, next year. No, I think Josh Allen has a ton of talent. I just think he's clearly there's something that's not clicking in the playoffs and that stuff. He's he's been dominating. Maybe he is the next Dan Marino, a guy that has awesome numbers. You wouldn't say he's a bad quarterback, but he has struggled to win in the playoffs here. Yeah, also just kind of like a little bit of a case study on why you want your head coach to be an offensive guy. You don't want to lose that that guru that's making your quarterback great. Yeah. No, I mean, if you make it, yeah, there's, there's everyone has that. Angle. I mean, you saw that Mc, uh, Sean, Sean, Sean McDermott was the only defensive minded head coach in the divisional round. So they're, they're counter trend. Yes. All right. So Bengals get the win. And then last but not least, we've already hit on some, but 49ers, 19 Cowboys, 12, Maher, of course, misses that first extra point. It was it blocked, was, Sean. It was blocked. <laughs> it was so wide left. Uh, it wasn't even close. You know, and these mixed uh, missed extra points were just six random events on a football field. <laughs> I love, I love, shout out to the podcast that said uh, Dak Prescott, he's been playing really well. Yeah, he has 15 interceptions, but those are just 15 individual plays. They're not necessarily representative. And he threw two. He th- he could have thrown thrown the game away with that that with that one to Greenlaw. And again, Cowboys were fortunate in a lot of ways. Like if they don't get that um, Ray Ray McLeod muff punt, yeah. the and the kicking game, it was so clearly in everyone's mind where they're going for it on fourth and six. Are they going for it because they like that spot to go for it, or are they going for it because they don't trust Maher? It's uh. It was just great. Even the, you know, it's bad when the the governor of your state is clowning on you, saying he could kick as good as the Cowboys kicker Maher on a one for seven extra point run uh, to end the regular season. How do you let? How do you trot that guy out again? At least he didn't lose the game for him, or did he? No, he, he, I mean, I I don't understand. Like, kickers aren't the kind of thing you stick with. Like, I, I no, generally they're very. Unless, I mean, I get it. You're on a, you're a guy like Tucker. So you've just been on a team for a number like Graham Gano, even on the giants. Like if, if Graham Gano missed a couple kicks, let's say at a bad two, three, four game stretch, I could see them dealing with it. But if he, if you miss, I mean, t- to do something that, that is hitting mainstream media, you're, you're getting out of sports and you're hitting like night, like tonight, like you're hitting the late show circuits. You're <laughs> You're get, you're getting made fun of at a whole nother level. His shittiness transcends the football world. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, I re- my wife Demar the- Hamlin and, and fucking Brett Maher. <laughs> my wife goes, so uh, I I guess some cowboy guy missed a bunch of kicks. Like even it somehow bled into her <laughs> feed. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Field Yates for this great stat. This loss marks the twelfth straight postseason appearance that the Cowboys have failed to reach the conference championship game that extends their own record for the longest such streak in NFL history. So congratulations to the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, and six in the divisional round now. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they beat a very fraudulent uh, Bucks team. And even if they beat the 49ers, then that would have been going into Philly. That would have been their fifth road game in a row. That is just that's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, and Dak's another one. I you know I I we were discussing it, but the apologists, just like with uh, Josh Allen, Josh Allen obviously a better player than Dak, but they make the same kind of mistakes. And when you when you tell me he makes these great throws, sure, fine. But he also makes these boneheaded throws. How many almost interceptions did we see tonight? And Ryan, I I kind of buried the lead on the Maher or sorry, in the Governor Abbott tweet. Uh, Benedict Dantold pointing out that their governor, if you don't know, he is in a wheelchair. So that <laughs> see that's oh, great that's... because only only he can make that joke. If I made that joke, it would be very insensitive. <laughs> but if you're getting clowned on. By your governor, who is handy capable in a in a wheelchair, that is just damn. They do it different in Texas. <laughs> football is king, man. Water towers and football. Water towers and football. Uh, and as we know, with the AFC Championship, Burrow has never lost to Patrick Mahomes. Kind of owns him. It, that will be a an exciting game coming up there. R.I.P. to the Cowboys. Ryan, before we close things out, let's announce breaking news. They are available sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Bengals Chiefs. I think it opened uh at one point Win had the the Chiefs as a as a home dog. Right now, it's a pick 'em. Minus one oh eight. Again, a shout out to the win for the generous uh lack of juice oh, on these uh no minus one tens here, Ryan. They really treat you to right. Give, yeah, a little something to give kick back to the wife. You know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. A little two percent. And that's the three. That's going to be three thirty on the West Coast. The AFC Champions. Yes, three thirty on the West Coast. Bengals Chiefs line set at pick 'em right now. Total sitting at forty seven and a half. Ryan, where do you think this line settles at kickoff? I don't think we can get to three either way. I would be surprised if 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 it there, gets to KC minus three. That's crazy. There, I I would imagine they're not going to let you tease Kansas City up through seven. So you don't think well, I don't think they ever I personally I don't think Kansas City ever gets back to being the dog. I think there's a chance oh. this ends at like my one and a half Chiefs, something like that. It depends what the narrative is. If this leg thing is this, you know they're gonna be talking about the leg thing all week. I, I personally think based on what I saw and based on what I know about injuries like that, he's gonna be worse off. There's a chance yeah. he doesn't play. There's and not a chance he doesn't play. There's a chance he might as well not play. And I, to me, this is a, you got to make this since he minus two and a half minus three, like that's, that's the way, like, that's the way I'm looking at it right now. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen because other, other shops have it as high as chiefs minus two and a half. I understand that. And, and I guess what I would tell you then is I would probably look to lock in a, you know, you know, I, I we love the, the teaser crowd. I mean, you got to lock in the, the teaser. If, if you, if you can get to eight and a there's, half, there's some one and a half, two and a halfs out there. If you can tease that up to Seven and a half or eight with the Bengals, you gotta you what's, gotta be feeling pretty good about. What's it. What, you know obvious? What's the handicap of like the the Chiefs with a very banged up Mahomes? Yeah, I mean, I think we saw it against they that were, Jags team. They were level with the Jags, who are not quite at the class of the Bengals. We're gonna need to see something special out of this Kansas City defense, and I'll dig deep and do my research, but. They, my can, first reaction is I think Kansas I think Cincinnati is going to be able to move the ball. They can rush better than the the Bills, I think. I think that might be one slightly greater advantage. Could see a little bit more pressure on Brown. Total sitting 47 and a half. That makes that makes uh, sense. Feels that's low. I think that's low. Yeah, especially with the Chiefs defense. Uh early game, NFC Championship, Conference Championship, 49ers catching two and a half points in Philadelphia. Total sits at 45 and a half. Ryan, what was your instant reaction when you, you heard this line? Uh, surprised it's not three. See, yeah, I, I, I forget who I was talking to. Um, I guess I understand. I mean, the, the San Francisco is uh, the, from a future standpoint, they were ahead of Philly going into this weekend. So I yeah. guess I understand the tick off of three that that's it is they were already the team that people view as the better team. And so if they're slightly better, you give Eagles a, a nice, healthy home field, but uh, you're, you're not willing to go all the way through. I mean, and even with the money splits, heavy money splits suggesting it's on the Eagles, uh, but 
does know, this not do, pop in a three? It, it does almost, this get to three? I, I think so. I think it has to. I mean, if it's if there, but the the everyone loves the 49ers. I think maybe the love might have cooled off because we did see Brock Purdy struggle a little bit at times. I think it goes to three and comes back. Okay. I think it, it kickoff will it, probably not three, but there will be a, a stretch. There's going to be a lot of as much as you want to play the dog, uh, the the like uh, the the chip dog. on my shoulder, like Rocky running up the stairs. The Eagles are going to get some bets this week. Well, and I think the 49ers are because everyone who's yeah, that's sharp, what, they have their power rankings, they have I, the other data that supports. Yeah, and they'll tell we, you like, there's no play here as long as it's at <laughs> two and a half. Uh, you know, I really love it as a teaser. I I do like how that's the, become the cowardly way to to handicap a game is like oh, I'm not going to actually give you a side but I'll tell you I love putting this team in a teaser. Yeah. Anyway. Uh yeah, I mean I, honestly my 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 first gut reaction is that the like obviously the the do, the dogs are a more attractive side to bet on but I don't know how Brock, much Brock I, I agree with the numbers. on the road in Lincoln Financial Field. It's going to be a wake up. Like call. 100% Cincy to me shouldn't be the the dog, but uh, this this San Francisco Philly game as much as I want to bet on San Francisco, I Philly should be laying 3. Yeah, uh I was texting with a friend of the program Adam Rosenberg and I he said he predicted uh I think he had it uh he thought the line would be three and a half and I go the, the market loves no, San Francisco. They, they would never do that. I I go I think that it'll be 3. This was even before the game and then I think the game probably cooled people off a little bit towards Brock Purdy and that offense. Cause we saw, we saw Dallas be, you know, hold them to uh, under 20 points. I think that's, I think we saw some chinks in the uh, Kyle Shanahan armor. Yeah, we were, we were, I was doing a, a spot and I got asked what, what I thought this line might be before the games were played. And I said three. So I, I, I don't, I really don't understand I mean, according to the data, I'm looking at it opened at one and a half. I like that to me is crazy. Well, and again, the power rankings will tell you San Francisco's the team slightly. I mean, you're, 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 you're again, you're dressing up this fuck. The Eagles are no right, one believes in us, right? The Eagles are right next to the 49ers on that, on that same power rankings list. All right. A half, a half point, maybe. Hey, maybe. and uh, before we get, before we go. We have a winner in the Apple Podcast gift card raffle. Shout out to Needs to Update. Uh, great entertainment is a review. Mm. Great bets and tons of insight with a great soundboard. Laugh while listening and rewind later for the pick. So, oh, wow. shout out to you. Hit us up, uh, podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast.com to claim your $100 SGPN gift card. Always firing those reviews. We're going to be randomly pulling uh, names as we go along. So, always a great chance to win. And, uh, Shout out to the store. Tons of great stuff. We got some sweet old school style uh, shirts with um, a bunch of cool colors that I think you guys will like store dot sports gambling podcast.com. Oh, and before we go, uh, we, uh, we got an amazing, we haven't clipped it yet, but Chris Collinsworth, I think on the uh, Saturday game with an awesome dong. and Another uh, dong. it was, it was a major dog. He really dong part <laughs> did. Dong. He really loves his dong. We need to put a strap them together and go dong dong dong. <laughs> Double dong. It could be like a grandfather <laughs> clock. It's just a, it's a dong clock. All right. Hey, that'll do it. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stagging the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Oh, I mean, I, I feel bad for Cowboys fans. Or I don't. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>